Hello again. Today I'll be discussing how elements are made and spread around in the universe. Before we start, I recommend watching the previous chapter on the life cycle of stars, because we will be revisiting it in more detail. So, have you ever wondered how all the different types of atoms are made? Well, they're made in stars. Even the atoms you made, even the atoms that you are made of, come from the inside of a star. But how are they made, and how do they end up on our planet and other planets alike? Well, we already know that helium is made when hydrogen nuclei are fused together, so we should be able to work out how the rest of the other atoms are made. The only problem is that to fuse any other elements, we need a lot more energy, at least 100 million degrees Celsius, and practically incomprehensible pressure. But, the only time that much energy exists is at the end of a star's life. We know that when hydrogen in a star's core runs out, the core starts to collapse and its shell is left behind. It becomes a red giant, or a red supergiant, in which the pressure and heat gets even greater, hot enough that the helium nuclei will start to fuse together to create carbon and oxygen. This is because gravity will collapse the core and make it smaller, and this is because the fusion has, there's not as much. And this results in the pressure getting really high because the core is so small, and the temperature will rise from all the particles colliding. But you may be thinking that I said the red giants swell up, and you are right, but it's only the core that contracts. And because of this new and powerful pressure being made by the reactions in the core, the outer layers of lighter hydrogen are pushed away from the core, making the star sweat. So now we have hydrogen, helium, carbon and oxygen. But what about the other elements? Well that would be it for our sun and other similar red giants, as there is not enough gravitational energy to compress the core any further. But the red supergiants, they enter stage 3, where helium runs out and the core contracts even further, raising the temperature and the pressure so that carbon can fuse into magnesium, neon, sodium and aluminium. This repeats itself to create new elements, which each stage, with each stage being hotter and shorter than the last, until the last stage of, until the last stage of a red supergiant, where the core is comprised almost entirely of iron. Although there are still more relevant elements that we haven't seen yet, unfortunately the time star the, the star's time has run out and no more fusion can occur. So it implodes in a supernova. This supernova releases so much energy that the heaviest elements like platinum, silver and gold can be fused during the implosion. Now I have to admit, I told you a bit of a lie at the start. Not all elements are made in stars. In fact, 26 of them are made by us in particle accelerators, where we smash particles to create, where we smash particles together to create new ones. So now we know how elements are created, but how are they distributed throughout the universe? If the star was a red giant. Then, when it becomes unstable, it ejects its outer layer of dust and gas into the atmosphere, and this can create a planetary nebula, which, surprisingly, consists of 75% hydrogen and 25% helium, just like a star would. Or, if the star was a red supergiant, then when they implode in a supernova, they throw out the outer layer, and thus distributing all kinds of elements, including some of the heavy elements, which in turn can build up due to gravity and turn into a nebula and create a new star. So that concludes the video. I hope you found it interesting and useful at the same time and you can watch my next video on our solar system. The link is down below. Thank you for watching.